Hello. Hi, hello, welcome. It is once again Saturday, Saturday stream. A little bit later than usual, but you know, we had a lot of things to do today. I did mention today's stream would be 2-ish, 2-ish p.m. And it's about 2-ish p.m. You could argue it's closer to 3-ish, but it's okay. Time's not real. Time doesn't actually exist. Giant line, hello. It is I, the most giant of lines. And I hope we're having a wonderful, wonderful day. I hope we're having a good day of world building. Um, I hope some of you were able to catch my stream on World Anvil. That was a lot of fun. Not my stream. My guest feature on World Anvil stream today is a lot of fun. Talking about chapters and collaborations and things that we're going to be doing together more often. That's really exciting. It's a lot of fun. So we're going to we're gonna explore more of what seven tomes can be and become here in the coming month. That's going to be a lot of my um, World Ember prep. Is, is getting everything all set up and ready for World Ember with our chapter, and that's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm excited. I'm excited. There's a lot going on. So all of you who have gathered, what are you guys doing? What are you working on today? Today we have, are of course carrying on with Spooktober because it is the it is the final week of the event, final week of the challenge. Of course, I must take my introductory sip, which I haven't done yet. Ah, wonderful. So what am I going to be working on today in terms of Spooktober? We have a couple more stubs that we need to make. There are a couple ley lines that we didn't actually get to put onto, onto the sheet yet. So that's really exciting. We're going to get to do that. Um, i trying to remember which ones those were. I feel like it's abeyance and inertia. <laughs> See, I'm working on an art piece I was supposed to do six months ago. Oh, shit. It's okay. It's okay. It's fine. As long as you're getting it done. <laughs> as long as you're doing it, it's fine. No, okay, so for Chimera, Chimera's cool. I feel like I haven't talked to Chimera very much, like, ever, but every time I see that name pop up in the Discord, I'm like, oh, that's, that's pretty cool. There's some good vibes there. And speaking of mochi art, I was looking at the new Dan again. <laughs> I just, I can't stop looking at it. Look at it. It's so cute. The little... Little sparkles in the back. <laughs> the new Dan. Oh, so precious. I hope that this sparks a whole a whole collection of Udan arts. Udan content, if you will. TV line is lagging behind laptop line, oh no. <laughs> I I feel like that just happens. We get more fan Udans, like yeah. They're just they're so cute with the little with the little Antenna. <laughs> Precious. Wait, hold on. I'm in the wrong world right now. I need to be in Malkora. Because that's what we're working on right now. Oh, so let's see where we left off. If we just pop open our little Stubtober article. Wahoo. I did I did a little bit of um a little touching up on the design of this article. So now everything is like in a little container. I just feel like it cleans things up a little. Of course, because we're getting such such small things in each of these. Like little, little tiny snippets of text. It just makes sense to put them in little boxes. And so there we go. That's what we have so far. We have 13 prompts done. I'd love to get more. I'd love to get a lot more than 13. I, I did say my soft goal was 20. So we'll see how well we can do that. Maybe not today, but by the end of the week, certainly 20. But we'll get at least two done today because I already know what they should be. Not precisely, per se, but I do know what they're going to be. And that's two ley lines. And I think I goofed myself because the thing I thought I needed to do is not, in fact, a thing because I just saw it in my article list. Um, hmm. Alright, we're gonna have to go look things up. I'll go look at my roadmap. There we go. That'll tell me. Okay, celerity and abeyance. That's what it was. Okay, I was close. I was close. They're very similar to inertia and agitation. But quite different. 
overall. So let's see. <laughs> Loving your Speaktober content. Thank you. You've been so nice to me. <laughs> like straight up. You were wonderful. Let's see. I need to name this new one of. We'll start with Celerity. It deserved off. Stop it. Ley line of celerity. I'm going to just copy. I'm going to copy my formula here. Create a new line of celerity. Is projects of What is what is the word I'm looking for? Wow, this is gonna be I'm looking for like the smaller, simpler word that describes like gaseous or incorporeal forms. <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to I I'm gonna have to do some web searching for words that I want to use. Um, let's go to the, the friendly handy dandy thesaurus website. I'm just gonna start looking for things. Material, immateriality. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of options there, as far as that's concerned. So we'll look at that. Not not existing in physical form. Mm. Ethereal. <laughs> This is, a, this is a tough one to grab words for. It's intangible. Intangible doesn't seem quite right. Disembodiment? Incorporeal? Ah, <laughs> the magics of not being solid. I don't know. We'll come. We'll come back to the word because that's really just a a giant hold up for me. Just trying to figure out this one word. This is the one way of describing this immateriality. Ah. Hate words, yeah. I'm gonna say hasten dispersion. Dispersion sounds like a good word. I like it. It's <laughs> it sounds like like disperse. Words are hard. Why is it like this? <laughs> yeah, we'll just say we'll just say haste and dispersion. So 
Oh, je suis sur Phantom, but thank you. Honestly, I could have named the ley line dispersion. <laughs> that would have been a fun word. But celerity is also a fun word. I like that word. Hmm. And that is opposite to the ley line of the things. Is rigidity we'll say rigidity and longevity I don't know ancient things Causing effects, bringing with it effects such as and now, what effects does this bring? So, if you were your structures so these are structures Speed. Pretty mundane, but it works. So illusory structures increased speed. And we'll come up with just one more thing. Intense winds. Rapidly accelerated um, processes. That can be very vague. It is very vague. <laughs> yes, bringing with it effects such as illusory structures, rapidly accelerated processes, and intense winds. I think that's. I think that's all it needs. So this is just our little our little stub of that. While I'm thinking about it, we're just going to make the other one as well. So this is the ley line of abeyance. Ley line of abeyance. The magic spell. Rigidity and longevity. Okay, well. 
my corner. Where is it? Maybe way around in celerity. Which carries. Oh, what did I say here? So haste and dispersion. Leyland emerges. Leyland is bolstered. Okay, we're going to land with it for threats, such as um, What I want to say is that this ley line brings with it like the bolstering, you know, like the bolstering of form. So like more mountains will form. Like, like all this tectonic activity is just going to happen all at once, pretty much. Mountains will rise. All kinds of other things will happen. So these are the kinds of effects I want to describe in like a couple words, you know? I don't want to go too in-depth. Like, I can't go too in-depth. They're stubs, so not a lot's going to fit in here. I need ten words to describe what effects that this ley line has on the... wherever it pops up. So we'll just have to see. Have to come up with these words. Maybe have a little, little sip to think things through. And you know, if we're on the topic of udans, I have my little udan mug. Very cute. I love, I love the summer camp mugs. The summer camp mugs are so cute. <laughs> I'm still here. Oh no, don't you worry. You're so welcome to lurk. But yeah, I got my summer camp mug. <laughs> summer camp mugs are my favorite ones I have. Yeah, they're so cute. I just, I don't know, I love... I'm just such a sucker for mugs that are like a different color on the inside. And so that just like, it just tickles me. It excites me. And then of course the little, the little handle also matches the color on the inside. I don't know, just like color block mugs. Just chef's kiss. Beautiful. <laughs> Summer camp mug is too small. Oh yeah, I mean it's, it's a little, it's a little small. I have like, I have like this glass of water here. It's like, it's bigger than my mug. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe next year we'll have some bigger summer camp mugs. <laughs> They're super cute. And yeah, I just, I don't know, like little, little Udan reading the summer camp news on the beach. And then also... Summer camp uh, ice cream cone mug, or the uh, ice cream cone logo. <laughs> that's what it is. A mug that's twice the size. I'm such a caffeine junkie. Uh, <laughs> I don't really, I don't really do caffeine very much. Um, I have this really cool thing called ADHD, which um means every time I drink caffeine, I actually get sleepier. <laughs> so it kind of doesn't help me. Um. But of course I come into work every morning and I have a cup of coffee because I just love torturing myself that way. <laughs> no, it's it's great. Body chemistry is sure a fun thing, isn't it? Yeah, let's um Caffeine is supposed to work better if you drink it, take a nap, and go on with your day. Oh, I wish I could. I wish I could do that. Unfortunately, I'm the kind of person who wakes up like a half hour before work. Um, when I have like a 25 minute drive to work. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's great. I, I have so much time for activities and naps and like brushing my teeth. <laughs> Getting dressed even. Can you imagine? 
what happens when I go to bed every night and see alarm set for three hours and 45 minutes from now. I'm like, okay, great. I'm so excited. <laughs> so excited for that. All right. Wherever this ley line emerges, form is bolstered, bringing with it effects such as... Peaks, rhythm formations, and hmm. and impenetrable or indestructible surfaces. I like that little description there. All right, that's, that's our last ley line of the group. And so now what we must do here is we need to make our little, um, we need to make our generic versions of these articles so that we can submit them to the challenge. And I'm just going to grab, did I not finish this article? Or did I just not rename it? I think I just didn't rename it. It's October 2023. 20, the header section. Okay, good. Good. I got a little concerned there. <laughs> this article I made did not have the event thing going on. But yeah, you can see the little, the silly little pattern that I have here where I have two of the same article, but one of them has Spooktober 2023 at the end. These articles will cease to exist after badges are delivered. But the actual articles, like these two that I've just made, these actual stubs, they will remain. That's kind of the idea. So I, I cannot function outside of proper templates. Not that I even not that I even use the templates really. I I just like them being labeled appropriately. It's an organization thing. We're gonna pick our Spooktober. Oh my gosh, yeah. Every time I do anything, I'm just realizing like, wow, there are 10 more layers of prep work that I have to do to make this work. Yay. <laughs> How exciting. But it is, it is pretty exciting, I would say. Or it can be, it can be very exciting. Our tag. Time ley line. I guess it would make a lot more sense now that I have all these ley lines to look up specifically by the name of the ley line and not just type in ley line. But all right. So we have a ley line outside to October. To the header section, we grab this. Go to subheading. And we go here. Oh, I need to turn off the sidebar. That's the link. Perfect. We grab the article block and nope, not this one. And this one. Set it. Oh. There we go. So there she is. There's our little Leyline of Celerity Spooktober submission. Course, one more thing we need to turn off comments on this article because I don't want people commenting on the throwaways and now oh where am I <laughs> looking for the spooktober article I think this one fits Spectre 
just because of the way that we have like the illusory lands and like the scattering of forms, I feel like it would be very, very possible that specter-like beings and creatures could exist in areas in which the ley line of celerity has, you know, emerged. That just makes a lot of sense to my brain. And so we're filling this into specter. Let's just go in here. Where is the line of celerity? We copy this. And we go into here. Um, no, we go into footer section first. And where are we? Specter. Specter. I hardly know her. Thank you, I'll be here all week. Refresh this. Wahoo! <laughs> cool, so we have another ley line. Excellent, excellent. That means we're at 14 out of 27 is the number, I believe. <laughs> excellent, excellent, very good. And now the other one. Or, ooh, apparition, I guess, would suit that more. If that's the way that I'm kind of like <laughs> going with this. Hmm. Uh, we'll see. I think I, I think I will actually trade it with, um, I'll trade it with Apparition. Because now that I'm thinking about it, it kind of just makes a little more sense. Let's see if I can do this just by eye, because I don't remember what number it was. Oh, perfect. And that does also, it does also open up this row that I hadn't done anything for yet, which is cool. I only have one more row that I haven't done anything in, and it's the final row. But you know, per tradition, we have to do one thing for Drown. We have to Drown a Verdi. It's required, honestly. Look, every single other row has at least one thing in it, which is really great. I, I feel like I'm always... Every time I do an article like this, where I'm like laying out all my prompts, all the things that I've done... I always find myself playing like, ooh, connect, connect the rows and things. It's like, it's like, oh, we got this one and then this one and then this one across. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make a little bingo board out of it. I'm trying to think. Uh, I think, I think the first three articles I did was like prompt 12 and then this one up, prompt eight, and then this one up, prompt four. <laughs> it's just, I don't know, it's fun to find little patterns and things. It makes it more entertaining to fill out, like, giant collections of prompts. It also makes it a lot less daunting when you make a game out of it. Like, instead of looking at just how many things there are, you look at, oh, I could fill out this row right now, and that'd be really sick. <laughs> but okay, so Leyline of Celerity should be... Did I already submit this? No, I didn't. Okay, so that's that's the last thing I need to do is actually submit the article. So put this under Apparition. There we go. And my line of inertia is just the one that I have up for reference. Now for Leyline of Abeyance, we disable the sidebar. Because there's just nothing in there yet. You can always turn it back on. We know how it works. So there we go. There's that article. And now we will create our new article. Line of Abeyance. It's October 2023. Let me grab that. Remove this space. It abates. Wahoo. 
Yeah, so because this ley line carries, like, rigidity and longevity, I'm going to put this under the clock prompt because it just, it deals with time, and I think that's just a good way, good place to put it. Oh, what am I looking for? This one. So I can grab this header. Sections header, subheading, Wahoo. Give me footer, H. R, give me article block. Thank you. Now undraft this view article. Beautiful, beautiful, perfect. Now we just have to go back and we just have to submit it. Grab the base. Which number is clock? Just because that might be a little easier. 19. Copy here. Bam. I keep I keep losing track of my dads and what order they're in. Oh no. Alright, beautiful. Um, we're one, two. We're three prompts away from having the entire first column finished. <laughs> so that's not the game I'm going to start playing. It's like, oh, we're almost done with this thing. Might as well, right? That would be great. I need to get at least one thing, though. At least one thing done from the last row. And I know we already said we're going to do drown. Hmm. I'm trying to think of the right place. Cause I'm, I'm thinking about a couple places in my world where water is like a big theme. And I kind of want to write more about the caldera. Let's see if I can, uh, I'm done, done working on this article. I can bring up, oh gosh, where am I? This image isn't gonna show up very well, but like this, this right here, this little, this little giant crater in the middle of my map. Or at the very least in the middle of Nefirin, specifically. If I can zoom in a little. Oh, it is right over here. So we have this, uh, the caldera. And from immense forces of fiery destruction eventually spawns abundant life. It's a caldera left in central Nefirin by an immense ancient volcano. It is indeed now dormant. I think I'd like to set up a stub for this article. Because, like, the, the blurb that I've written for my map here is, like, all of the information I have about this place. So it'd be really cool. Depending on how far I branch out, I don't think this will be, like, a world number topic. But it's a place in my world, and I feel like it should have an article for it. Even if it's not complete. And I, I am rewriting the Iskani, like the people in my world. So their involvement with this place might not be exactly the same as I had originally intended. But we'll see. We shall see. What I, I do want to make some kind of article that just like incorporates drowning a Verdi. <laughs> it is very possible that some drowning does occur out here, out in the caldera, but I don't know how likely that is. All right, we're gonna. It's gonna be a geography article, so we'll just get started there. I also don't know if it's gonna have a different name because I don't necessarily. I don't know that I want to just name it Caldera and move on from that that way. It could go any direction, really. But we'll see. We'll just have to check it out. We'll just have to make sure uh, we're doing stuff. Uh, geographic location title. We'll just we'll fill it out that way for now. This into a different tab so that I can keep it. 
reference open. Yeah, one of one of the things I'd really like to do is go into my like ink stained map at some point. Maybe not like not now, of course. Sometime in the future. When I have more insight into some of these locations in my world, actually rewrite some of their blurbs a little bit. Um focus on different information, things that are more relevant. Because as I'm developing different parts of my world, some of them are just not as true anymore. They're not as correct. So I don't know. I'll have more context to work with. I'll have more other things to kind of like pop in here and there. Oh, but all right. Oh. Now, not everything needs to have fancy names. This is this this is the caldera. That's what pe it is. It is the V principal caldera. There's not a single bigger one in this world. It's like it's the size of a country. Is what it is. So, you. So I think it's very reasonable that the people of this world would actually know it by the name of its structure and not really any further name from that. Caldera Mochi? That just. That just sounds like an exciting, like, treat. Like you have like a little a little mochi, but it's like caved in. And maybe there's some like syrup in the middle. I don't know. I'm trying to think of what that would actually be like. <laughs> I feel like that'd be a lot of fun. Food. Yeah, I I just had some lunch, but I'm still like thinking about something <laughs> to eat. Give me some give me some little snacks. I, mean, I kind of I do have a couple snacks with me like I have these um these little like rice crackers with seaweed on them they're little seaweed wrapped rice crackers they're really yummy I get them I get them pretty much every time I go to the store I just grab like a bag to go with my groceries I just munch on them throughout the week because I don't want to eat them too fast not because I'm worried about eating too much I just don't want to have to go buy more soon <laughs> So I just ration them for my own sanity. The caldera. So titanic structure. Titanic. Central Matera. The Titanic structure located in central Nefirin. And uh, the remains of an ancient uh -huh. <laughs> how do I describe this before? I'm so good at remembering details of my own everything. Remains ancient volcano. I'm trying to figure out how words work and none of them are working for me. Because <laughs> like I'm I'm trying to rewrite the sentence like 6,000 times. Because it's just, it doesn't flow exactly the way I want it to. So I'm like, ah, screaming, screaming, dying. It's just, it's just how writing works, I think. No, it's, it's great. It's great. Things are going very well.
there are the remains of an immense ancient volcano. Caldera is what remains of an immense ancient volcano, volcano, which once bubbled in central Neferon. Now dormant. Volcano is behind this titanic structure. Which now houses abundant life and water sources. I'm gonna say that the um, Oh, it's 51. I have to cut it down. We have to cut it down, boys. <laughs> hmm. What if you put everything into a variable and put the variable in the article? I'm, I'll be honest with you, I've never really worked with variables, like in the sense of, you know, like content type variables. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like it would kind of defeat the purpose of it being a stub then if I'm trying to find workarounds. No, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We just, we just need to cut down like one or two words from this. It'll be fine. Okay, we did it, we did it. The caldera is what remains of an immense ancient volcano which once bubbled in central Neferon. Now dormant, the volcano left behind this titanic structure, now housing abundant life and water. The high cliff faces of the caldera cultivated an ecosystem of interesting creatures rare in other lands. So this is going to be the location of my world where I get to go on like a little safari adventure. <laughs> and we'll see what interesting what interesting little creatures we can come up with for this place. So Mochi, I feel like you would enjoy that quite a bit. You know my you know my little creature adventures. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Me would. Heck yeah. This playlist is immaculate. Thank you. <laughs> Just my little, my little lo-fi, 
lo-fi music remixes. <laughs> you know, I feel like I feel like this one would fit into Spectre pretty well because it's like there's a ghost of the volcano that once was. I was gonna put this in the drown prompt, but I realized that there's not really a lot of drowning happening here, <laughs> in my opinion. In my humble, humble opinion, you know, maybe. Maybe there is a cursed lake. Some kind of cursed lake in Arcevella that people are like, yeah, don't go in there. You can have a bad time. So that might be something I play with. Articles are clinging onto their prompts for dear life. Is some for the drown prompt that just involve water, no drowning. Yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, I don't know. I feel like as long as the inspiration came from this prompt, it's fine. It can go a completely different direction. As long as you started from that, like, you start from here, you start from this one word, and then your imagination just, like, takes you way over there. It's fine. I'm sure it's fine. Let's get this in here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Caldera location. Switch over from kitchen to tree. For references, no comments, please. Thank you. Header at the end. Both characters drowning in helplessness, so two picks for that, heck yeah. Good for the helpless prompt and the drowning prompt. I mean, I guess they did say you can answer two prompts in one thing. As long as you, uh, as long as you have 13 entries. Let's see. <laughs> what am I looking for? Oh, yes. Okay, well, hold on. I don't need this article open anymore. That's good the way it is. If I need to look at... Hold on, sections. Oh, sidebar, turn that off. New article. I need, to, I need to, like, take a note from, like, some other people who are doing a ton of stubs in their world and have, like, have, like, a special CSS class for snippets. Have, like, cute little containers and things. Because I know Stormbrill is doing a ton of that. And the little, the little snippets that he's making are just so... They're beautiful. They're absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> they're, like, their own entirely different form of content. I'm like, ah. Oh. I would love to do something like that, but I don't know how much I'm going to use it in the future. I don't know. I don't know. I guess I am going to have like a ton of stubs all over the place going forward. So it could be helpful. It could be really cool. <laughs> no, we're just, we're getting ahead of ourselves with that at the very least. We have a lot of other things we really need to work on first. So we go with this. Caldera, everything's beautiful, everything's... All up in here. Beautiful, and we're gonna make this specter. We'll copy this. That should be like prompt number three or two. Two is the number. Moonlight Bard, hi, hi, hi. How are you? How are you doing today? We are now sitting at 15 articles for the event. Wahoo. <laughs> oh, and see, now we're getting now we're getting to that point where like a bunch of rows are being filled in and everything's looking good. You know, you just have like there's there's this one empty one surrounded by prompts that are done. And this one empty one surrounded by prompts that are done. So I'm like, oh well now I have to I have to do these prompts. I have to fill things in. I can't be leaving any gaps, no sir. <laughs> Very well, still sitting at 8, but hoping to make some progress this afternoon. Heck yeah, that's what we're here for. And if I would just stop kicking my desk, that'd be fantastic. 
yeah, we're here to make some progress and things are going pretty well on that front, I think. Um, of course, we got to 13 last week, so this really is just like a very chill, no stress kind of situation. We're just trying to get done as many more as we can, as many as we're able. I don't know, there, there are two prompts that I like, I need to complete or else it'll be the death of me and that's crow because, you know, birds. <laughs> how can I, how can I skip a bird prompt? And also drown, because, you know, it's tradition. One birdie must be drowned every year. <laughs> but it's just figuring out what exactly that would mean for me and for my world. Figuring out where I am and what I'm looking at. So if I just bring this map back. I don't know. We're looking at Arcevella in particular. There's like a better map in this article. Uh, everything's loading in weird. The proper map of the world, the region. Like if I if I wrote about, like maybe this river, or this little like lake, this like middle island over here, this little this little bay. That'd be pretty sick. Just need to I just need to figure out what exactly I want to target. Not to pressure you, but I will cry if we don't get Melkora crows. Oh, <laughs> well, now I have to. Now I have to do it. Um, oh, gosh, but how different are they going to be from real crows? Or is it just going to be a regular crow and just hanging out? <laughs> I mean, if any place is going to have regular crows, it's going to be it's going to be this region. Like The wildlife is not quite that wild over here. This is like, this is like the vanilla region of my world. Everything's pretty normal around here. You know, for now. <laughs> We're not going to talk about what's going on down here and the atrocities that we'll find later once I get around to actually writing them. <laughs> but no, everything, everything up here, you know, from the part of the map that you can now see, like every, everything's pretty normal. Everything's pretty fine. Nothing to see here. Nothing to worry about. Have no fear. <laughs> Aurelian gilded crows. Oh, cute little, cute little golden wings. That'd be so fun. I don't know. Let's um, let's just pop open a species template and see what we can come up with. Hmm. Oh, what if... Oh my gosh, okay. What if we have crows? What if we have crows in, like, in and around the city of Aurel? So they're like, they're like city birds. They're city slickers, you know? Um, <laughs> and so these could be... Like, we, we could call them gilded crows. But it's not because they themselves have like gold plumage it's because they take like the gold plumage like maybe maybe shed by these pigeons and they like tuck them into their own wings so that they can shine so that they can glitter <laughs> wouldn't that be so cute so they pick up the shiny shiny feathers of other birds and they decorate themselves with them Yes, this needs to exist now. I love them. I'm gonna call it Gilded Crow, but I don't know if that's precisely the name. That's the most bird behavior ever? Heck yes. <laughs> I I love them already. I I just came up with them like three seconds ago, but I would already die for them. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll just hold on to the name for now. Oh, have a little, a little sip. Now, Gilded Crow. Gilded Crow. Let's see if I... Oh, let me 
found in the city of Orel. And they, they have migratory patterns based on other more exotic birds. Once they see a new kind of bird, they'll follow for miles and miles and miles, so they're found everywhere. <laughs> yeah, no worries, no worries. I, I love to see little sprees happening. Bursts of creativity. It's just so much fun. Um, but I, I feel like, I feel like that is absolutely, absolutely a bird that I would love to write in. In different regions, they have different stolen feathers. Yeah, I would like, I would love different variations of these crows. I think, I think for this specific article, I'm going to stick with the ones that are like Orel natives. Um, but you might find them in other places in the world. And they just, like, yeah, they'll, they'll take like different types of feathers. Imagine, imagine if there's like two, like in the same location, like same location, same population. If there's like two different groups of them that like different color feathers from like different types of birds. And they have like little crow gangs. <laughs> and so they wear different colors. This is, you better not be seen in like purple feather territory or else they're going to maul you. <laughs> Don't be wearing yellow feathers in purple bird territory. That'd be, that'd be so, so good. <laughs> uh, I just love birds. They're so good. There's just, there's so much mischief you can write into birds. Imagine if they attack people wearing the wrong colors. Oh my gosh, yeah, I can imagine like, local um like you're getting a tour through a city or something and the guide's like oh yeah um if you're gonna walk through this one corner of the local park do not for any reason have green feathers on you and you're like what the fuck why <laughs> why not and if you don't believe them and you do it anyway you find out very quickly why not it'll it'll be either Either you are an enemy of those birds for wearing green feathers, or the birds really love green feathers, so they're just going to pluck them right off of your outfit. <laughs> they're going to pluck them off your outfit, they're going to wear them themselves, and it'll be great. I, uh, I would die for these birds. <laughs> this is why I love hanging out with you guys. Let's see. But yeah, so this is going to be the Aurel specific variant. And so they're going to be called Gilded Crows, kind of like a mirror of the Gilded Pigeon, um, because the feathers of the Gilded Pigeon are their favorite. <laughs> All my birds do is scream. I mean, I think that's pretty cool. I mean, hey, even the one that screams has like little color changing antenna <laughs> to say how happy they are. I think that's pretty cool. See. The gilded crow is a bird commonly found in the city of Orel. And not for its plumage. I mean, not for its natural. Plumage. But for but for the plumage of the gilded pigeon, they use to adorn themselves. Yes, yeah, the gilded crow is a bird commonly found in the city of Orel, named not for its natural plumage, but for the plumage of the gilded pigeon they use to adorn themselves. 
These are subspecies of a more widespread species of crow with similar behaviors. Okay. Yes, these are subspecies of a more widespread crow with similar plume wearing behaviors. Yes. Wonderful. I love these creatures. <laughs> these, once I get around to actually making more birds for my world, these are going to be like number one on the to do list. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when I'm able to like find more time for actually drawing them. I I want to make art of these little birds who just steal feathers. Like I, I really have to decide if they're going to be like assholes about it and if they're just going, going to pluck feathers off of birds or if they're going to be like scavenging feathers. Like maybe they'll try to maybe they'll try to find like the nests of these other birds and just like snag a feather or two that just got shed in there. Because I don't want them to be too evil. I don't want them to be just like plucking birds. I mean, I don't know. This The setting is supposed to be kind of dark. It could happen. If you just find little naked birds in the crow territory. Poor things. Let's see, does this have a... Poor birds, yeah, I know. Poor sad little creatures. See, I just, I have this condition called I love birds a lot. So it's, it is difficult for me to write content about birds that are not having a good time. Because then I just start to get sad. <laughs> Poor little creatures. No secrets here. Oh, no, not credits. Thank you. There we go. Gilded Crow, Spook Tower 2023. Get a little tag in here. Gilded crow species. <laughs> I can torture the people in my world all day long, but the birds get a life of joy. Exactly. That's what I want. That's what I need in my, like, deep within the recesses of my soul. I just need the birds in my world to have a good time. The people are not going to have a good time in my world, but the birds. The birds will. <laughs> at least, at least most of them will. That's the hope, anyway. Good crow, I just need to grab your article block, please. Da, 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 da. Where is my tab? Oh my god. Carnivorous birds? That's an option. Like, I... I just know for a fact there are plenty of bird species, like, already existing in the world that would eat me if given the chance. If they just weren't so small. <laughs> If I could fit into their mouths, they would absolutely crunch on my bones. No questions asked. So, you know, in a world where all kinds of horrific things can happen to the species of the world, why not have birds that'll just start eating people? Among other 
things and creatures. All right, so there's our Gilded Crow. Got this article all set up. It's published and ready. And so now we have the crow prompt finished. Huzzah! It's so good. We're making such good progress. No, 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 that's a mistranslation. It's not rapture, it's raptors. Like, like the raptors are coming to eat our flesh. So here we are, a little refresh. Huzzah! And there we go. So, row one is complete. We have despair down here, but nothing is quite springing to mind at this exact moment. Although, I don't know, I feel like, I feel like this little, uh, no, no, it's not rapture, it's raptors things, puts like a little kernel of despair into my soul. Um, but we'll come back to that later. Like, it, it's something to reflect on, something to talk about in therapy, I don't know. Just any, any number of things. Um, this row's finished, which is really great. Cryptic? I feel like I definitely need to create like a cryptid of some kind. Like, especially, um, especially since Arcevella is like, you know, it's entirely like farmlands, fields, mountains, like all this kind of stuff. There's no way that there's not some kind of Savellan Bigfoot, you know? Like, there's no way that's not a thing. We got summoning, we got eerie. We figured things out for that. Pale? Pale? I could definitely think of a couple things that I might want to do for Pale, especially down in the, um, especially in the Barrens area. Things are going to get a little weird down there. Um, fate, Slither, Hopeless, Epitaph, and Drown. <laughs> hmm. I don't know, we have like a... <laughs> Fuck yes, cryptids. Always cryptids. Hell yeah. That's that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, just... We have a whole hour, pretty much. To think about what else we might want to do for this. For today. So let's, um... I kind of just want to check on the official page, make sure that I actually submitted all those articles. So despair, cryptic, summoning, eerie, pale, fate, slither. My wearing laptop is making my legs all warm and toasty. <laughs> yes. I remember back when I used a laptop, that would be like my favorite thing. Um, specifically in the winter, because uh, it was always really, really cold. And my parents would always bring me to like their house elsewhere, which was like kind of like under construction and being like worked on. So the heating wasn't like perfect, you know? Um, and so I would just be in my room, cold, dying, but laptop, in lap, warm, just keeping me alive. <laughs> that was really great. Mm -hmm. Now let's, let's see. think of I want to make a fish <laughs> I need to follow in Mochi's footsteps and make some fish someone say fish I heard fish it's true you did hear me say fish and I want to make one today I wish for fish Okay, okay. So if we get a little species prompt open. We title it Fish for now. <laughs> I'll change it, of course. Um, no, it's... Uh, I want to do this one for the drown prompt. And my inspiration right now is like giant catfish. Because those things are, like, horrifying, and I definitely think they'd eat a child. I don't know if they do, normally. I think- I'm sure it's happened. Um, <laughs> no, no fucking way. What do you mean, no fucking way? <laughs> I was thinking about a giant Melkora catfish drowning people. Yes! <laughs> the brain cells have aligned. Oh my gosh, so yeah, we now we have to, if the brain cells, like, collided together to give us this idea. <laughs> That's so scary. <laughs> no, we, we just, this just giant, giant Savellan catfish, dude. We gotta, we gotta make this, make it happen. 
Okay. <coughs> oh my god, I'm dying. Oh, I think there's a giant Malcora catfish in my lungs right now. Um, so I'm thinking... I'm thinking this this little like circle circle lake here, this island in the middle. I feel like that would be a good place to just house some giant catfish. <laughs> they've got they've got nowhere to go. They just live here. They just keep eating stuff. Other fish, other creatures, larger animals, actual humans. I'm gonna go nuts on writing some freshwater fish species because folklore behind so many IRL species is beyond fascinating. You can do so much with fish. Yes, I know. Fish is just like... It's such a broad topic. It's like, on every level. Like you said, with the folklore of fish, there's all these different stories and tales. And like, on a taxonomic level, there's just... The fish are wild. I love that post out there that says, like, there's no such thing as a fish. Speaking, speaking purely in like taxonomic terms, like there's no such thing as a fish. They're just so broad, they're spread out all over the place. And I love it. Fish with human-like teeth, yeah, oh my god. These stories of people getting bitten by underwater people, but it turns out to be a fish? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't like that. Like you just come out of the lake with like a human a human shaped bite mark on you like what the hell was that? <laughs> the fish are insane. But I will always think about that one little fish that I encountered when I was snorkeling once on vacation. It was like and the fish that swim up people's redacted, yeah. I, I remember watching that on like National <laughs> National Geographic or Animal Planet or like whatever channel it was. Oh my god. We were just- we were exposed to all these wacky things as kids. <laughs> but no, this um, this tiny little fish, like, like this big, maybe, I encountered while snorkeling. It was a tiny little brown fish. And I'm just minding my own business, I'm just hanging out, and this little fish just like swims up to me. It doesn't have a care in the world, doesn't care about anything or anybody. Comes up to me, bites me, I'm like, Bruh? <laughs> You're so small, I could like squeeze you in my fist. And he's like, I don't care. Get out of my water. <laughs> I know, it's so rude. I will, at that point, like, what do you do, right? Like, I'm just a little kid in the water. Like, what the fuck? This fish just bit me. <laughs> like, okay. Like, I, I have a feeling this fish does that to a lot of people. And now, like, now I need to know, like, what kind of fish this was. But I feel like I'm never actually going to know because the memory of it is so fuzzy. I just know it was a small, small fish. Very little. Finally created a plot outline for my story. Oh, awesome. Flowerheart, welcome in. What are you, uh, what are you writing about? What kind of story is this? I wanna see. I don't know about seeing right now, right at this exact moment, but if you want to tell us about it, absolutely. It's multiverse traveling lesbian magical girls. That's pretty cool. That's pretty exciting. It's <laughs> always, always a fan of that. The outline. Hmm. All right, so on the topic of fish, my little, my little article titled fish, we can see it here. Fish. So we're thinking, okay, giant, giant man-eating catfish. Hmm. Hmm. 
I need to figure out a name for the actual lake that it lives in. Because it's, um, it's one of those things, like, I just never named. <laughs> I'm going to try to get my catfish article finished and published. Oh, heck yeah. Um. <laughs> Hello, I'm home. Welcome home. Welcome home and welcome in. We are trying to figure out more of these articles for Spooktober. Hi home, I'm Mochi. Oh my god. That's so silly. It's almost as bad as my um like I hardly know her joke. Progress report. We're at 17 out of 27, which is actually pretty sick. I thought we had less than that. <laughs> but I guess I guess we did do four today. So that's cool. If all goes well and we finish this one pretty soon, we'll have 18, which is really great. And then and then maybe we can do Maybe we can come up with like a cryptid for our world. <laughs> That'd be really fun. The first of many, I assume. Um, okay. I have one idea, but I don't know if I should use first person, third person, or both. Hmm, interesting. How would, how would you use both? I wonder. Jumping back and forth. I feel like that can get a little confusing for people. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I have to I have to figure out what I want to name this fish. I'm just gonna start typing stuff. I have to roll today. Love everything about Malcora. My species have an R about them that makes me feel at home. Oh. Even if it's a man-eating catfish. Listen. Every every world needs its little man-eating catfish. I think it's just I think it's mandatory, frankly. <laughs> like we we all need little reminders that like this thing is real. This thing exists on this planet with us. <laughs> For sharp, I'm writing about a little orange kitten named Marmalade. Oh, what a precious name for a little orange kitten. I need you guys to know that orange cats have my entire heart and soul, just like on lockdown. Is, it, is your catfish inspired by the Mekong giant catfish? It could very well be. I don't. I don't know any of the actual like real famous catfish by name. Um, I just know that they exist and they are large, and they could definitely swallow a child. <laughs> You could give it like a really dramatic name, like Forager's Bane. <laughs> Largest one's almost three meters, I think. Pretty nutty. Yeah, like I'm looking at this one like article about them right now. Nearly nine feet long, 2.7 meters. I don't know if that's the largest. Tip the scales at 646 pounds, 293 kilograms. Pretty wild. So yeah, these things are huge and it's a little, little spooky. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, I feel like these things need like Decent amount of space to kind of function. Well, like I'm wondering, like, is this the right home for them? Because I feel like this one singular lake isn't going to be enough real estate for them to really flourish, you know? Unless it's just like the one, you know, it just lives here for a very long time. No one really knows how it's still alive, but it will eat you if given the chance.
I have an orange cat named Mr. Marmalade. Oh, this is Millicent. Gray cat called Gray Boy. That's good. I like I like the name Gray Boy. I have an orange cat named Remus Mama Monkey Face Monkey Monkey Paw. Aw. <laughs> Also, the giant freshwater stingray from Mekong, which is like two meters in diameter. Yeah. <laughs> Waffling about fish. No, it is fine. I love seeing you excited about stuff. And you know, if we're on the topic of fish, might as well talk about fish, right? <laughs> oh. Trying to, I'm just trying to really think about this uh, river and lake situation. I'm going to say that there's like, that this lake down here is like way deeper than anyone thinks it has any right to be. And it is, it is unknown whether or not these gigantic ones actually live here. It's more like a myth than anything. We'll find a lot of regular size fish. Yeah. So here we are, back here. Oh. So we're going to call it the Northlands catfish. And this is going to be our, like, it's a, it's a normal fish. It's out there. But there are rumors that there are gigantic ones that will absolutely eat you if you go swimming in that lake. Rumors, of course. Unsubstantiated, maybe. Theoretically. We don't know if that guy actually got swallowed by a catfish or if he just got pushed overboard and left behind. And the guy was just trying to make a little cover-up story. Um, okay, the uh, Northlands catfish, fish found in the gotta get the money from those news outlets. True. I'm setting myself up to like name drop this island, but there is not a name for this island. Mm. I'm just I want something simple, you know. I don't I'm sick of coming up with names for things. We're gonna call it Stone Island. The Northlands catfish is a fish found in the lake surrounding Stone Island in the Savannah Northlands. There we go. And so now let's uh, let's add some some spice, some flush, some fluff. That's the word I meant to say. <laughs> All right, but um. People, people do like hate catfish. I'm just, I'm just looking up, uh, looking up stuff on the internet. And apparently, catfish farming is the leading aquaculture industry in the United States. That's pretty cool. Oh. 
Very, very strong, distinctive flavor. They're only cooked by breading them in cornmeal, frying them in hot grease on a skillet. Pretty fun. This website is just blinding white in color. Dangerous to eat in some places because they can be bottom feeders. All right, all right. I'm trying to get some more context, some more stuff that I can write about. Are a rare catch. My favorite food among some Northlands families. Rumors have spread. Catfish of enormous size working in the waters of Storm Island. Rumors have spread of catfish of enormous size lurking in these waters. Hmm. Which can swallow grown humans. So that's pretty fun and exciting. We will not elaborate on the rumors at this time. They're just out there. So there we go. Northlands catfish is a fish found in the lake surrounding Stone Island in the Savellan Northlands. They are a rare catch, but a favorite food among some Northlands families. Rumors have spread of catfish of enormous size lurking in these waters, which can swallow grown humans. I'll jump in the water and find out if there's a man-eating catfish. Yeah, I'm gonna find out or I'm gonna die trying. And I'm gonna die trying, I don't know. One of the two or both. So let's just get this article. I just, instead of writing Spooktober, I just wrote Spoot. That's, that's oopsie. This article block, I know I was just here. Bum, 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 bum. Luther, HR, Liam. And where is this article? Heather. Northland's catfish. Subheading, heck yes. Get that sidebar out of here. Publish you. Are you beautiful perfect? I'm gonna turn off comments still, but pretty much, yeah. Preferences allow comments off. So there we go, there's our drown prompt. Huzzah! So let's get that into here.
there's a physical address would be allowed as an article title. I mean, I guess it depends on what that looks like, how long the address is. I know a lot of addresses can be quite long. There we go. Now every single, every single row has something in it, which is really great. We love to see it. And so yes, that should put us at 18. It's 18 out of 27. Mwahaha. Look at us making progress. We could probably get at least one more done today. Maybe two if we're, if we're lucky and if we push it, if the ideas really flow. Close that. <laughs> Fish doesn't exist anymore. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just gonna put these over here so I stop clicking on them. Alright. This will be our editing page. Okay, I'm just gonna be clicking around on things just all over. Yeah, so now I just have to decide, okay, what am I what am I doing this time? What am I where am I? What am I writing about? Um, because of course we do have, um, ideas for pale, kind of, kind of, sort of, um, some fun desert adventures, you know, things are, things are always weird in the pale, in the dark, dark, pitch black caverns underneath the desert. They're going to be strange pale creatures. Oh, cryptic. I, I want to make like a cryptid or something. Hmm. Pale creature with giant white eyes and spindly fingers. Yeah, exactly. All kinds of weird things. On if we're on this topic of like weird pale things living in caves underneath your cities. Um, now I, I just can't stop thinking about the, um, I think they were goblins in, uh, in RuneScape. <laughs> um, they're like the, uh, like the, the under, the under goblins. I, I don't remember if they had like a, a proper name or something. Cave goblins. Yes. The ancient Dorgashoon. Yeah, so the, the cave goblins from RuneScape, that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> Dorgesh Khan. Now I just really want to go play RuneScape again. <laughs> Backwards knees to climb up walls really fast. I There are some sentences that I wish I didn't read. <laughs> oh, but I love it though. I love it. Like horses. <laughs> like bats. <laughs> I love it. Believe me, I do. But now I just can't get the, like, idea of, like, some humanoid creature with backwards knees just, like, running up a wall trying to catch me because I stumbled into a cave. But that's- that is genuinely, like, exactly the kind of thing you'll find down there, so <laughs> thank you for the nightmare fuel. I will find a way to repurpose it. Because I... Like, for my, um... For my adventure, April. Descent. I have I haven't seen that film, so I've <laughs> I have no context here. Um, but yeah, during my adventure, April, um, like entry submission, little adventure that I started writing, um, I came up with a lot of like the concepts for kind of like the beginnings of what we might start to find over in um, over in what used to be the city of East End. In the Melakaj Barrens. You can see it on my map as a um 
as what used to be a city. Over here. Is Malcora really fucked up when you look behind the cottage core curtain? God, yes. Literally, yes. It's, um... I'm trying to... Like, I'm really focusing on, like, the cute and cozy situation we have going on, like, you know, in this entire region here. Um, I already knew the answer, just had to ask. Yeah. Like, I, I'm trying to set up, like, the, like, the little landing zone of Malcora, which is, like, it's really, it's, it's nice, it's chill, you, you know, you got your, like, typical fantasy struggles, like, oh, you know, church bad, uh, <laughs> you know, things like that. Um, well, you know, there's, there's bad church and there's good church, like, um... But you have, like, your, your regular conflicts. I'm like, oh, magic is kind of silly, haha. But, like, we don't really get much of that around here. But then you start pulling back the curtain. You start seeing, like, you know, this region is actively being ravaged and kind of... You're in a lot of danger. And we can open up the doors to a lot of exploration to other parts of the world that are... Very different from our Savella. Arcevella is just like this wonderful little sheltered land where they haven't really been affected by magic like the rest of the world. And so there, there's a lot going on just all throughout all throughout the world that people here just have no idea about. Like, they have no context for anything. They barely know what magic is. They never really see it. Unless, like, unless someone, like, brings in their magical ability and, like, demonstrates it, but, like, they wouldn't really do that around here. It's kind of frowned upon. And if you're going to be a magical person, why? Are, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? <laughs> of course, one of my favorite worlds. I love it so much. Thank you. You're so appreciative. <laughs> oh, but I... Yeah, I don't know. I have to figure out what else I want to do. What else I want to make. What else I want to, like, sink my teeth into right now. Right at this very moment. <laughs> but if we dive into East End just a little tiny bit... Do I... Hmm. I need to go check and see... article I'm thinking of still exists. It doesn't. Um, Y'all got any of that, uh, sand shifter? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, so I... This is going to be our little cryptid situation. And this is something that I like technically wrote about ages ago, like ages, ages ago, like several years ago, I think during a summer camp. Um, the sand shifter. As a horrific bug creature, but like a humanoid bug creature. And the context of them has pretty much, like, entirely shifted from back when I wrote about it, like, two, three years ago. So it had to be, like, three years ago at this point. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna breathe some new life into these buggy creatures. <laughs> at least at some point. And I think that'll be an important creature to talk about, especially as we're trying to develop this area of the world. Get into it. Sand shifter. Mm. Okay. How do I how to describe this is, it is in a way funny that I describe my world as having only one in a thousand being able to use magic and of those, only 1 in 20 being trained to use it. But of players, 2 of the 3 characters using magic. Well, when you put players into a place, into like, when you gather them up together, they're a special case. 
You know, they they are not the 999 in a thousand. They're like, they're the one in a million. Like, they're the chosen ones, essentially. They can get all kinds of crazy with their builds compared to the average, the average person. And I think, I think that's just the natural order of things. People want to be interesting. People want to stand out from the rest of the world, especially when they have, like, agency over their character and who they get to be. So yeah, if you have a world that has magic in it, it doesn't really matter to them that it's rare. Their character in particular has it, yay. <laughs> the only time I think that's a problem is if you're like, hey guys, we're gonna do... Like, you guys all need to be low magic. But, you know, at that point, that's just, like, on the storyteller to, like, kind of set those boundaries first. Like, hey, you know, this is really rare. Uh, we're not going to really do magic in this party. <laughs> or if we do, we'll discover it later. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, Sand Shifter is a creature of myth. Known only from travels, um, <clears throat> travels, recounting strange sightings. Yeah, the Sand Shifter is a creature of myth known only from travelers recounting strange sightings in the Melkaj Barrens in their exodus from the desiccated sands. Um, often described as humanoid creatures. Horrific insectoid features. Most who hear of sand shifters push them off as mirages. So yeah, these are some uh, horrific buggy creatures. Buggy people, buggy creatures. And it's, it's like the situation, like, um, as people are evacuating the Malakaj Barrens, um, the people who are, you know, like, making it through this trip, making it through this journey, they, they arrive at their destination. They're like, bro, I saw the wildest shit on the way here. <laughs> um, and it, it would kind of have, like, a very similar energy to, like, bro, I saw Bigfoot. And people are like, huh, that's pretty cool, dude. Anyway, welcome to our town. <laughs> Enjoy your stay. Um, and I already forgot which prompt I made this for. Uh, <laughs> oops. Where am I? They saw me in the desert. Yeah, they saw Mochi. Oh, wait. Yeah, Cryptid. Duh. <laughs> I am very silly. Oh, these are these are my sand cryptids. <laughs> yeah, I got you there. <laughs> you know, I I will figure I will figure something out for Pale. It will happen one of these days. I, I rearranged all my tabs, thinking it would help me, but it only confused me more. <laughs> Alright, so that's Sand. Sand Shifter. Um, Spooktober 2023. Copy this article block. 
I just need to get rid of that sidebar. I don't know why it's there if it's empty. <laughs> anyway. Let's put the footer. Bam. this sections header subheading wahoo publish view it to make sure it's perfect comments are off fantastic and you where is the button cryptic Show me the cryptic. Beautiful. And then we get to refresh. And voila. It is so... <gasps> Falcorn shrimps? Ah! My back is killing me from shrimping. I'm like, I'm, I'm being a shrimp right now too. I need to stop that. I'll do a little shrimp check for myself. Oh, stretchy. Okay. We're back in it. Hey, Malcorn shrimps. I would love that. Refresh yourselves. Sippy. Oh, I'm out of juice. I have to start pulling from the water cup. Oh, I forget points do things. Yeah, I I have all these like extra I have all these extra little Little points things now. It's just, it's fun. I got 5k points sitting in the bank. Well, hey, I don't think anyone's claimed early bird yet. <laughs> I know, okay, so we have. Do, 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 do. We have despair, summoning. Do I want to know what sloppy is? I mean, you could press the button. <laughs> I'm an early bird and I'm a night owl, so I'm wise and I have worms. Welcome, Ochi. I mean, you were the first person in the stream, so it is accurate, <laughs> even though you're uh, grabbing it like two hours in. <laughs> Sloppy. Yeah, you can just you can just spam that. <laughs> it's an iconic voice line from critically acclaimed MMORPG Final Fantasy fourteen, free now up to level seventy, including award winning expansions, Heaven's Ward, and Stormblood. With no restrictions on game time. In case you didn't know. <laughs> I did not know. <laughs> I just, I love that meme so much. I, I almost have it memorized. I'm getting no work done on this article. The stream is too interesting. Oh no! How could I do this? Well, unfortunately for all of us, stream is almost over. Almost. We got like 15 minutes, maybe. Uh, and then I have to go off and do my own thing again. I got some stuff to finish, some naps to take. It's been a very, very busy and eventful Saturday, which is not, it's not usually how things go. I'm I'm not used to being like fully booked out from like the moment I wake up on Saturday to like the evening. But here we are. <laughs> all these all these fun secret meetings to be a part of. Oh, I need to Oh, I need to stop sitting like a shrimp. I've been on so many streams and watched so many hours of stuff. Yeah, I know. 
Like I like I had my stream today. I had World Anvil stream, and that was really fun. Um, I always I always feel like I just don't say enough stuff whenever I'm live with World Anvil. <laughs> oh man, like I just I can't I can't control this. I'm just a nervous little creature. I'm like, oh, I need to wait for the perfect time to say this thing. And the perfect time never comes, and then it's on to a different topic. And I'm like, well, maybe I should have said the thing <laughs> earlier. <laughs> you did great, thank you. I try my best. I I'm just a very like stressed and disorganized person, like specifically right now. Um, <laughs> but you guys just wait. Come January, I'm gonna be a whole new bird. I'm gonna be a whole new bird. I'm gonna have time for myself. For the first time in like three years? <laughs> That's gonna be insane. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be fantastic. Um, a whole new bird. <laughs> a whole new bird. And you know, some of you, some of you in this chat might already know, but I do have a new project planned for next year. And I'm very excited to start working on it. Malkora will never rest. I will always be working on Malkora, but I do have another another world idea that I want to get into next year. And I'm very I'm very excited. I I would make it like right now, but I do not have the time to devote to it right now. So I want to give it like a proper a proper hello, a proper send off into the world. So it's probably going to be like my um my January or February adventure. So look out for that. That's going to be exciting. Oh come on, but okay, we have to we have to think of one more thing. Okay, we should do an in chapter secret Santa. Hmm. What would that entail? Very curious. I'm 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 always open to conversations about this kind of stuff. Sad time to not be a Tomy. Aw. <laughs> It's okay, we can we can use your mod powers to pretend you're in there. Melkor Hedgehog! <gasps> Wait, we did talk about the um we did have like a little discussion about like the little harvest hedgehog. I remember that. Wait, what if what if for pale I just make a little like albino hedgehog? Or what if what if it's like a hedgehog that lives in the caves and so it doesn't really doesn't really get a lot of sun, so it's just like this pale little creature. <gasps> Please God, yes, cave hedgehog. All right, I guess we're gonna, I guess we're gonna make a little cave hedgehog. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Um, if I just remembered where any of my tabs were, there we go. Uh, species. Um, this is already finished. We don't need this open anymore. Ah. <sighs> Okay. Let's see. So we're going to we're gonna call you something. Indeed we will talk <laughs> we will call this thing something. Names are always the hardest part. Cave hedgehog eat cave biscuits? Maybe. If there are biscuits to be found in the caves. <laughs> Organize one in your chapter too, silly. <laughs> that is that is true. That is possible. Okay. We got we got like fifteen minutes or so. You just gotta make one more little hedgehog. One more little creature for the collection, and then uh, then we'll actually meet our goal. We'll hit our 20, 20 prompt goal, and that's really sick. Okay, perfect. Um, oh, again, it's just it's those names. Hmm. 
Yeah, I might be doing a secret sand and other analyze discard server. Ooh. <laughs> That's pretty fun. Oh, hedgehog. Hedgehog names. Name of dog. Hog. Hedgehog, not hedgehog. Ah. The way the words are wording, but not in the right way. Okay. Hodgehog. <laughs> We're going to call this a little I think Hodgehog is a kid's book. Ooh. I don't think I've heard of it then. Oh, sounds like catfish. Heck yeah. see the different types of hedgehog and what they may be named. are going to be I'm going to call them stalagmite urchins because they are small and prickly and they scuttle around the stalagmites on the floor of the caves and this this idea makes me happy <laughs> they're little little spiky boys Like my urchins. Yes. Oh, species and hedgehog. Found in deep caves. Is a lo-fi chill version of Zombie by Cranberries? Yes, it was. It absolutely was. It's a good song. Stalagmite urchins are a species of hedgehog found in the deep caves beneath Isle Bella. Because they live in depths where the sunlight does not reach. These creatures are often pale. Hmm. Creatures 
self in prayer and I can fill in the blind. Many display light sensitivity when exposed. Forty five words already. Woo. Yes, yeah, stalagmite urchins are a species of hedgehog found in the deep caves beneath our savanna. Because they live in depths where the sunlight does not reach, these creatures are often pale and blind, but many display light sensitivity when exposed to a light source. So, most of them do tend to be blind, but maybe not completely. They can still they can still see the light if you shine it at them. I bet they have a mega sense of smell. Heck yeah. Absolutely. They're they're out there crawling around all those stalagmites looking for all like the little bits and pieces of food that might be around there. Now I'm wondering like what kind of cave plants are down there? What else might they find? What other creatures are down there? Stalagmite bugs, yes. Tiny bioluminescent beetles scurrying around. <gasps> oh. Yes, what if what if with their limited eyesight they can see like the tiny, the tiniest little specks of bioluminescence. So they can't really make out forms very much, but if it's glowing, if it's glowing, it'll attract them. Stop, now I'm trying to finish my catfish, but now I want to write about cave beetles. <laughs> it's, a, it's so hard to be in your mind when everything is just so inspirational. <laughs> so unfair, why are you so cool? Why are you so cool? I, so many of these ideas I got from you. We're just, we're just going back and forth at this point. There we go, we got the stalagmite urchin. There we go, we're at 40, 48 words. Perfect. Calixtus, hi! Welcome, welcome in. How are you doing? How fair is your spooktober? And or any other adventures you may be having this month. Watches over the month signs, infect your mind with the species ideas, and boom, Alcora's like 500 species by the end of the year. I, I'm open to this. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that's a bad thing. Okay, so we need to make our little... <gasps> oh gosh, I'm sleepy! Life is so hard when you're just really sleepy. You do. I'm doing good. Finished my article for chapter collab challenge. Ooh, how exciting. I still have to work on mine. I do have one started, so that's really good. I just need to actually get the uh, get the idea a little bit more fleshed out. And then, then we'll be on places. Just imagine the skies of Malkora full of burbs fluttering about. Heck yes. I would love that. Yeah, I I just want to make a ton of birds. <laughs> and like I um and like you already know. You already know the project that I've like planned slash theorized for next year. We're gonna have so many birds next year. 2024. That feels really weird to say. 2024 is going to be the year of the birds. <laughs> So just you all wait. 2024, Year of the Birds. If it's actually like a bird-related Zodiac next year, I will scream. 
don't know. It's gonna be Year of the Dragon. That's close enough. That's <laughs> I think that's close enough to a bird. Or if my prompt was too basic. Oh no. Listen, if there's anything I know about this community, it's that even the most basic prompts, people people can find ways to make them very interesting. Mm, burr beer, I like the idea. Heck yes. I'm just recruiting everyone for the burb army. Maybe, maybe next year I will create a challenge, like an unofficial challenge for birds. <laughs> Each month I make a hundred birds for the Yonderverse. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Ne next year is Year of the Dragon. Oh, please, I'll pay you to make a bird challenge. Oh my gosh. Listen, okay, if, there, if, there's a, if there's a lot of demand for the bird challenge, it has to happen. And we will, we will make it happen. Okay, okay. Turn off comments, turn off, oh, wrong section, turn off sidebar. Yes, the wrong article. Publish this, view this. Just screamed in a secret Discord server to see if anyone's interested in the burb challenge. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so this is pale, okay. Look at us go, oh my gosh, you guys. Like, with exactly, like, with exactly enough time, too, we got to 20 articles done. We kind of killed it today. Let's just refresh this. Yeah, there's our little, there's our little hedgehog. We made so many cool thingies, yay. And it's all thanks to you guys, with all of your fun ideas and concepts and things, just kind of... Putting ideas into my brain. <laughs> so, of course, there are seven prompts left that I haven't done. We will we will see how many more we are able to get done throughout the week. I'm not going to push it. I'm not going to, like, stress myself too much. <laughs> um, of course, I have a lot of things to get done during this week in addition to stuff like this. So, you know, we've already we've already surpassed our goal pretty much. And so, yeah, I'm excited to see where else I can take this, what other uh, stubs I can make, what other things I can just set into motion for my world. This will be so fantastic. TJ's on board with the burb challenge. Ah! <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> Ah, I'm looking at the chat. <laughs> oh goodness, I guess I guess I'll have to start planning. I'll have to make like a little birdie badge too. <laughs> but no, it's it'll be it'll be really good. Like maybe um Yeah, a little bird badge. <laughs> so yeah, I guess um I guess next year when I start working on that uh that secret new project. Maybe, maybe I'll uh, make a little event to go with it. So that'll be a lot of fun. But all right. With that said, however, I do believe it is time to start wrapping up things a little bit. Talk about, we're gonna spend a little bit of time just chatting about some stuff. <laughs> hello, hello, hi, it's me, it's my face. Giant line back again. <laughs> Thank you for great stream. Thank you for hanging out. <laughs> Giant line. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for hanging out. This is like, this was one of the most joyful streams I think I've had in a little while. <laughs> just talking about fun ideas. Just really, just really enjoying the ideas. Of just kind of being beamed into my brain and 
placed into my world. <laughs> we have a lot of fun creatures today. We have the Gilded Crow. Of course, the Gilded Crow is something I'm so excited about. <laughs> oh my gosh. And yeah, this has been this has been delightful. I'm so glad I wasn't too tired from all the Zoom calls. Yeah, I oh, I am exhausted. But that's okay. It's okay. You know, it's time. All that means is that it's time for a little nap as soon as I get out of here. <laughs> that's all that means. Never been on a Zoom call before somehow. Yeah, I am. Um, like, you would think that I would have used Zoom before for work and such, but um, actually, I really haven't had a cause to. <laughs> like, we don't really do meetings through Zoom or anything like that. So I just have never had the um occasion, I guess, to download Zoom before <laughs> World Anvil. Oh man, I don't know, but it's uh, it's fun. It's not as uh. Not as weird, or I don't even know if weird is the word to use. <laughs> Can't exactly do a Zoom call and feed monkeys from my home, so I've never had any reason to. Yeah, I don't know. Just bring the monkeys home. I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be great. Nothing, nothing could go wrong as a result of this. No, 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 no. <laughs> all right. So I have to find someone to send you all to. So let's find you someone great, someone I would love to have you have in your viewing pleasure. <laughs> I don't know how words work. Forgive me. I think, gosh, I, I'm going to send you to my friend CB Doodles, playing some Baldur's Gate 3. Always wonderful to be in that stream. Thank you for best stream ever. Ah, thank you. <laughs> it's good thing you're a writer. Oh yeah, so good. <laughs> When the words just work beautifully. So, all right. I will get this raid started here. Everyone, of course, my raid shout is Bird Raid. If you would like to announce yourself and where you've come from, drop by their chat, say hello. Shout, shout the Bird Raid is coming, <laughs> is here. And yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow for Baldur's Gate 3 of my own playthrough. <laughs> And so, yes, do enjoy the rest of your days. Stay healthy, stay healthy, stay hydrated, of course. Grab your sippies, go world built, enjoy the rest of your days. And I will see you guys later. Tomorrow, tomorrow, 2 p.m., Baldur's Gate 3, yay!